Hey YouTube, this is Brianka and you are tuning into Life with Brianka here on this channel where we do lifestyle and words of encouragement. And on today, I have a powerful, powerful word of encouragement from a message that I preached this past Sunday called Mud and Rock. The pit did not hinder my progress. I pray that you enjoy it. And at the end, I am going to close out in a prayer that will lift you and encourage you to keep moving. Amen. So... Um, how many of you all know that God is a full circle God? Tell me why you already do that. How many of you all know that God is a full circle God, right? We know that God is a full circle God. You know, he just sets up things. He works things out where everything kind of meet, matches the dot or connects the dot is what I'm trying to say. That everything is just full circle. And you look at it you're like, oh, okay, God, like that makes sense. That's what you were doing the whole time or that's how you worked it out. Um, so this week for me, and even coming into this message, is was a full circle um, message. So I'm going to kind of take you on the journey of how this came about, and then we'll get into the text, okay? Okay? Okay. Amen. Sorry, I need to talk okay. back, y'all. I'm, I'm trying to flow with the Holy Spirit today, okay? I need, I need you. Amen. So on this week on Tuesday, one of my um, big sisters in Christ, she released a prophetic word to me and to my life and a lot of what she was saying was dead on. And you know how like you know what God is going to do in your life or has expected to do, but at that point in time I didn't have the language for it. So when she released that word, it was very on time because it gave me language for what God was trying to do in my life where I did not have any language. Amen? And that was good in itself. Um, but a part of the prophetic word that she um, released was God was saying that um, that as it pertains to um, my past, he said, don't be worried about my past and the past residue. He also said, don't allow the enemy to taunt you with the past and the past residue. God said, it's just the past, right? right? So don't be afraid, don't be worried, concerned, worried, right? And have an anxiety about your past and the past residue. And also don't allow the enemy to taunt you with the past and the past residue. It's just the past. And so as I got that word, I was like, okay, God, like, okay, don't be worried, but I'm worried about the past. Like, I know you said don't be worried, but now I'm concerned. Like, Lord, I, I don't want no residue. Like, I want you to take it all out, God. I, I don't want nothing of my past to stick with me. And so that was my heart to God. And um, I, after that, I left it be. Like, I was done with it. However, God is so intentional. Even when we're done with some stuff, God was like, I know that you need an answer to that question. And even though you've moved past it, I'm going to still give you an answer. So even on today, I just got chill bumps right then. God is giving, gave me the answer, so I want to share the answer with you all um, on today. Amen? Amen. 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 Um, so, yeah. So this happened. Then next thing happened on Saturday. So I had already knew that I was going to, Leslie, don't talk about my grammar. I already had known <laughs> that I was going to um, teach from Psalms 40. So if you guys want to go ahead and go there, we can go there. Um, and I was going to teach from Psalms 40. However, that Saturday morning, I'm like, nothing is sticking. I was looking at the scripture. I'm like, okay, I'm getting a God. I'm getting a good word, right? But it wasn't a God word. And I knew it wasn't for it the house for the season or whatever. But I'm just, I was just like, it, it's just not, it's something, something is just not right. And so I called Pastor Davis and I was like, hey, you got a minute, I need some advice. I don't want to give the people a leftover word. I don't want to give the people some words that they've already eaten before. I want something new and fresh. What is your advice? And Pastor Davis was just like, this is the moment where you got to go back to God. You don't want to give the people something that God is not telling them to eat. So make sure, amen, that when you go to God, that you go to see what he wants to tell his people. And he said, take your agenda off the map, right? So I did just that. I obeyed, and y'all, God spoke quickly. And when God did that, he said, Psalm 40 is where you're supposed to teach it. He said, but this time, I'm going to take you to the scripture, but I'm going to open your eyes to see what I really want to tell the people. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's go to Psalms 40, 1 through 2. And I'm reading from the Christian Standard Version. And it says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he turned to me and heard my cry for help. Look to your neighbor and say, God heard my cry. God heard my cry. Verse 2, it says, he brought me up from a desolate pit, 
out of the muddy clay. Look to your neighbor and say muddy clay. And set my feet on a rock. Just cry out rock. rock. And making my steps secure. Three, he put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear, and they will trust in the Lord. That's all we're going to be dealing with today, one through three. I want to read two again. He brought me up from a desolate pit out of the muddy clay and set my feet on a rock. So instantly, God began to work with me on the text. And I thought, hmm, now that's interesting. He set my feet up. From a, he brought me up from a desolate pit out of the muddy clay yes. and set my feet on a secure rock. And I thought, hmm, that's interesting because everybody knows that mud and rock don't mix. That is muddy, is super slippery. That when you get in mud that is super wet, so it's really thick, it's hard to move out of it. In order to get out of it, you need some help. So to imagine that someone is being pulled out of a muddy place and then set on not just any rock, but they call it a set rock, a secure rock, that that that's not normal. That's not often that that happens. So in this text of Psalms 40, we see David doing an analogy. He's putting his life situation, he's calling this life present time that he's in, whatever David was going through at that time, he's calling that a desolate pit. He's calling that a muddy clay. And a desolate pit or muddy clay, it was a, a well or a cistern, whatever you have it, and it was empty. They did this to Jeremiah when they threw him in the cistern. They also, um, Joseph's brothers did this to him when they threw him into that empty cistern or well or or pit, whatever you have it. And so how the cistern or the well was set up, that it was a, a long, deep well, and the only thing that you could do, you couldn't look around, or if you did, you weren't seeing nothing but stone, and as you look up, the only thing that you could see was the light of day, and if someone so happened to walk by. Inside the well is a smooth, just cylinder, all around, very smooth. And of course, because it was once a well, there is water down there, and so that's where the dirt and the water combine to make mud, all right? Y'all following? Okay, so let's say that something happens, let's say, it's very smooth, but let's say by chance, in the well, in the cistern, in the pit, you just so happen to find a little crevice that you can hang your, um, your hands onto, and so you're trying to climb up. However, it's not going to be successful. You know why? Because you've got mud on your feet. So every time you try to get out, it's unsuccessful because your, your feet are slippery, right? And so they created that a lot of times when they did it to Jeremiah, to Joseph. When they put them in the pit, it was to, to ridicule them um, because they were in trouble in their standards. And so the only way that you can get out of a pit, the only way that you can get out of an empty well is someone had to come and get you. There was no way that you could rescue yourself. And for real punishment, they would leave people there for dead. But then, the title of my message, by the way, is Mud and Rock. Okay, Mud and Rock don't mix. Mud and rock don't mix. But in this analogy, David said, I waited patiently and expectantly in a desolate pit. Have you ever been in a desolate pit and you're waiting for God? But maybe you were waiting for God, but you weren't patiently waiting. Maybe you've been in a muddy situation and you weren't expectantly waiting. But David said, I know I'm in this present situation and it's muddy and it's sticky. And even if I wanted to get myself out, I cannot do it in my own strength. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to wait patiently and expectantly on the only one that can pull me out. No one else can come and get me out of this pit. There are some pits that God would allow you to fall into that no one else can come and get you out but the Almighty God. So David said, I know only one that can hear my cry. I know only one that can rescue me from this place. I know only one. So that's the one I'm going to wait patiently on and expectantly on. And so when David said he, he got pulled out and brought out of this muddy place, he was set on a secure rock. Well, who is the rock? Jesus, God. He is the rock. David said, when you pull me out of this muddy pit, you set my feet on a secure rock. God, many know that God will pull you out of a place and set you on him. Set you on him. Set your mind on him. Set your focus on him. Set your standards on him. Set your heart on him. God will pull you out of a muddy, muddy place and set you on the rock. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right. God can pick you from a slippery, slippery place to put you in a fortitude, fortitude place. Fortitude. Fortitude place. God can take you from a slippery place 
and put you where your feet are fortified on him, solid on him. He is the rock. And truthfully, God is the only one that can do that. He is the only one that can take you from muddy situations, muddy circumstances, a muddy past, and put you on a solid rock. That's right. So that's what David was saying in his analogy. But yet and still, water, mud, rock that don't mix. See, I actually have experience in this. I um, occasionally go hiking. I've gone hiking like a few times. And so when I go, there's this area that there's like a waterfall. And it's really nice. And I've gone, um, the times I've gone, I've gone and done, like walked in the water. And it gets pretty high on me. I know I'm short, but it gets like wasteland on me. And I'm walking through the water. Now, I've done this barefoot, and I've also done this with shoes on. But what I've noticed is that when I go, when I, as soon as my feet hit the water, and there are rocks, no matter where the rocks are rigid, no matter if the rocks are smooth, the rock is going to be slippery. And so oftentimes when I'm walking in the water, though I'm trying to get to a destination, I found out that sometimes I had to crawl to get to where I was going because it was so slippery. So because of my experience and knowing no matter if the rock is rigid, no matter if the rock is smooth, knowing that if my feet are wet, and I can't even imagine the mud part, but I know how if, if my feet are wet and I'm having a hard time gripping a rock, I can only imagine what David was going through in his mind when he says my feet are muddy, but when God pulls me up out of this place, he puts me on a secure rock. That's very difficult for that to happen, but only God can do that. Only God can do that. David says, once my feet are on this rock, I am in a secure place. I'm going to go back and we're going to read verse 2. He said, he brought me up from a desolate pit and out of the muddy clay and set my feet on the rock. So as I was reading that, I um, visually used my imagination. I just kind of just saw it with me. So use your imagination with me for a moment. He says, his muddy feet, just picture muddy bare feet. And then just picture a rock under that. And God said, that's the residue. What is residue? Let me define residue. Residue is a small amount of something that remains after the main part has gone or been taken. I'm going to say that again. Residue is a small amount of something that remains after the main part has been gone or taken away. Now remember, I said, God, I don't want no residue. I don't want to deal with nothing. But residue, you know how you, um, let's take this water bottle. And you see me doing it now. So you see how the water bottle is sweating. Well, on this um, podium, there are droplets of water on the podium. So that's the residue. I'm taking the main part, but there's still something yeah. left on the podium. The residue, the residue. And so as God, as I imagine that, and God showed me that, um, or allowed me to see that vision, he said, that's the residue. He said, see, after you've gone through a muddy situation or a muddy season, there are times where you have some stuff, some mud lingering on your feet. Come on, somebody. Have you ever th been through a hard situation, a past circumstance, or whatever it is? I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to fill in the blank for you. Whatever that situation is, and then you look back, and then you see the mud, and that's the lingering result. Oftentimes, that happens when we go through something very difficult, like a pit. And it's a, it, it, we are left with the resi residue, the part of what we just went through. Now, I don't see the whole cistern on my feet. You don't see the whole mud that I was standing in on my feet, but you see some of it. You see some of it is still lingering on. It's like when someone goes through surgery, right? And then after they had surgery and they have a scar, that's another form of residue, right? You can see where there was an incision and you can see how they entered and you can see how they exit. When, when you see that scar, you know that somebody was on the operating table. Why? Because there is residue of what had just played, taken place. We can tell by the scar that something has been removed, something has been adjusted, something has been repaired. Why? Because I see the scar, which is a sign of the residue. There are some muddy seasons that God has brought you out and you're in God and you're saved and you're preaching, you're ministering, you're singing, you're dancing, you're prophesying, you're administrating, you're writing poems, all this stuff, right? But there's still some lingering stuff on your feet. And you look down and you catch a glimpse of it. Come on, I'm prophesying, but I catch a glimpse of my residue. I'm, I'm singing, but I catch a glimpse of my residue. I'm encouraging you 
but I'm catching a glimpse of my residue. And if not careful, the enemy will use our own eyes against us. Come on, somebody. And he will look to you and say, look, you ain't delivered. You thought you were delivered from depression. Look down at your feet, my God. You thought that you were going to get broke. You thought that you were really free. But look down at your feet. You're still dealing with the past hurt. You're still dealing with the result of the wound. And the enemy says, look down at your feet. And then you start to believe in the, yeah, you right. I, 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 do, I did step in that place. And I, I'm still seeing some stuff. And I think I even see the grass that's stuck to the mud that's stuck to my feet. And I think I'm still seeing the lingering results of it. The enemy will get into our heads and play on you. But what did God tell me that I'm also encouraging you? He said, don't allow the enemy, don't be fearful of the enemy, how he taunts you, my God, with yes. the residue of your past, because he will do it. That's right. And he'll say, you ain't free. You ain't delivered. Uh -huh. That was all a, a showboat. You were just oh, acting on. That wasn't real. Everything was cast out. You had a bucket in front of you. You were doing all this. You ain't free. You still dealing with the past. Yeah. That's how the enemy taught has any has the enemy talked to you anybody like that? All right, amen. We in the house. And so I'm thinking about this and all this stuff, and I said, but God, how does this this residue that we're dealing with how 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 does this benefit you? Because God, you if you wanted to, you can pull us up out of the mud and clean everything off of us, right? You can clean our feet. We don't have to be on the rock with mud on our feet. How does this muddy, how does the lingering of residue benefit you? And God took me to verse three. He said, it says, he put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many yeah. will see and fear and they will trust in the Lord. He said, when people hear a new song coming out of your mouth, it will get their attention from you to me. He said, when I, when people see that you are no, that they see that you had lingering mud on you, but they see that you're still on a secure rock, it's like a, a, a opposite. He said, that gets their attention on me. When people hear that you went from a song of defeat to a song of victory, he says, it gets their eyes upon me. When people hear and see that you are still making, that the pit did not hinder your progression. When people can see that the pit did not hold you back. No, 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 no. When I stepped on the rock, 
I am secure. I don't care what mud is on my feet. I don't care what I went through. I don't care how my past looked like. I don't know. I don't care what I was dealing with in my mind. I don't care what I was dealing with in my heart. I don't care what I was dealing with in my finances. When I take secure steps on the first rock, he secures all of my feet in him. All of my steps are secure in God. And so the, the, the key to this of how to get the residue off is you got to keep walking. you got to keep walking. God says, I don't want it to stay. No, I don't want it to stay. I'm going to use it, though, because it can be a testimony, but it doesn't have to stay. He says, if you keep walking in me, the steps will continue to be secured. And all of a sudden, as you're walking in the water, the mud is just washing the rabashi away. So many of us, we need to take secure steps for God, so we can truly have the testimony to say that not only did the pit not hinder me, but I'm taking secure steps in God. Not only did the pit not hold me back, but I'm taking mighty, fortified, solid steps in God. We got to keep walking forward. Our steps are order. Come on, somebody. Our steps are order. So if you were like me, you're like, Lord, I don't want to deal with the residue. Know that God is saying when he said he doesn't want you to be fearful, he's just saying that Hey, it's not going to be there forever, but as you continue to walk in me, it'll fall off. How do we continue to walk in God? You know, God has me dealing in a place of um, dealing with father wounds and my father wounds. And so in order for me to keep walking in these steps, I can't um, say, I'm saying, okay, Lord God, I want you to heal these father wounds. I'm praying on it. I'm reading books concerning it. You know, I'm, I'm seeking guidance for this, but then I fall back off of it. Come on. Right? Right, we step back, but I gotta continue to make steps forward. If God said that he wanna heal these father wounds, well, I gotta make sure I'm walking in him. I don't know what God is saying he wants to heal you from, but you can't go back off of it. Right, you can't stop, because what happens, remember, if I stop, I still have residue, Rabbi Shi, I still got residue on me, so if I stop, then I'm stagnant. Then if I stop, then I can't move. Then if I stop, the enemy starts to win, and he says, see? Aha! I told you. Yes, come on. He'll say, I told you so. But God says you got to keep making steps forward. Because if we stop, five years, from, five years later, we'll still be in that same spot. But if we keep more moving forward, five years later, we've been healed from the father wounds. We've been healed from the mother wounds. We've been healed from the pain. We've been healed from the past. We've got to keep making steps forward in whatever area or areas God is saying, I need you to get healing of. You still see residue? That means I still got to keep walking forward. It's not until I stop seeing the residue, come on somebody, that I know that I've made it to the complete place. God said, if I he said if the residue was still there, he said, then that would contradict. If he said, if I allowed the residue to stay, then that would contradict what I said on the cross when I said it was finished. I'm, a good, I'm going to complete the work, but I need your help to do it. He says, I want to also show you that healing doesn't always come in a snap second. That deliverance doesn't always come in a snap second, Nisha. That restoration doesn't always come in a snap second. Or freedom. That sometimes you got to walk the healing out. And that could be years on top of years, but you got to stay with God. Sometimes you got to walk the deliverance out. Yeah, you had a deliverance session, but now you got to walk it out. You got to walk out your freedom. And he says, and then once you get to that place, you will know it's a complete place. Because there's no longer signs of residue. That people can't even see that you were in the pit. Really? People start, when you tell them your testimony, they'll be like, really? You went through that? Have you ever had those moments where people say, really? You went? That's how you know. That's a sign. I'm going to go back and we're closing. Psalms 40, it is like this. I'm sorry, uh, team, I, media team, I didn't give you this, but I just want to say it really quickly. Psalms 40, 14, 15, and it says, Let those who intend to take my life be disgraced and confounded. Let those who wish me harm be turned back and humiliated. Let those who said to me, aha, be appalled because of their shame. So I'll say it like this. Let those who intended to make the muddy, muddy pit your place of disgrace and confound, may they be disgrace and confound. Let those or that that wish you harm be okay. the ones to turn back and humiliate it. Let the enemy who said aha to you be the one appalled and running back in shame. Yeah, 
On today, as I close, I came to simply encourage those who were like me and said, but God, I won't do what Marissa do. That you need to be reminded on today that God says, don't fear it. I've given the righteous are bold as lions. Don't fear it. Rabashi ken rabashi. Don't be afraid for it. He gonna taunt you, but don't fear it. If it comes up, cast it down. It's a vain imagination. God said, it's just your past. Yes. When God said that to me through the prophet, it's just your past. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Because sometimes we look at past circumstances, especially if it's a cycle. And we're like, man, God, I did it again. I ain't learned my lesson. We still going through the same thing. My household's still going through the same thing. I'm still going through the same issue on my job. My kids are still doing the same thing. But God says, don't be taunted by it. Don't be fearful of it. Don't be afraid of it. I'm with you. And I'm pulling you up out of the muck and the miry clay. Out of the muddy pit that they put you in and left you there for dead. Rabashiki, Rabashi. Sometimes the enemy puts us in pits in the hopes that we'll die there. But he did he not forget how David said he heard my cry. He turned back and heard my cry. That means that our cries are enough to get the attention of him, Tyler. That you have a specific voice that only God knows. That when he says, when you cry out to him, Tyler, he says, my son, I need to hearken my ear to him because he needs my help. He needs me to pull him up out of a pit. And God says, I will grant it the secure steps. Though the muddy place is not, and coming out of the muddy place and on the rock is not naturally a secure spot. God says, in me, because I am the rock, I'll make sure your steps are secure. Stay in me. And I'll make sure where others stumbled and fed or fell that you will walk in secure steps. Thank you, Jesus. This is how you can go back on situations and look at other people alive and you say, you know what, I went through that same thing, but I still kept my mind. You know, I went through that same situation, but my heart is still pure before God. Because why? Because I found a secure rock in him. He secured my steps. So we're going to open up the altar. We ask that you please still wear your mask. If you need prayer on today, to be okay, or let me say this, to not be worried about the residue. To not be worried about the process that God is taking you through. The altar is open. If you need prayer and knowing the secure steps of God, if you need prayer and knowing that God is going to grant you security if you keep walking forward, I came to encourage somebody that don't look back. I came to encourage somebody to keep walking forward. Rabashi, get rabashi, get rabashi. Alrighty, I pray that you enjoyed that video. Now I'm just gonna close out it with prayer. I pray with my eyes open, so I'm gonna keep my eyes open, okay? Heavenly Father, God, I just thank you for the person that's watching this video. I thank you, Lord, that um, what you've called them to do in the earth, and I thank you, Lord, for their pit seasons. I thank you, Lord, for their muddy seasons, that even as you pull them out of the mud, even as you pull them out of the muck and the miry clay, oh God, that as they walk in you, oh Lord, that the residue will fall off, that they will not be timid nor afraid when the enemy comes to taunt them with their past, but they are a whole man. They are a whole woman. They are a new creature in you. I thank you, Lord, that you are reminding this individual that their past does does not define them. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, that you are reminding this individual that they are more than conquerors in you. So even in their past, they even despite their past, they have conquered. And as they progress, we'll conquer more things in you. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that as you walk alongside us, as we continue to move and make strides in you, as we are walking on secure ground that the residue will just fall off. So God, I seal this prayer under your blood. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that this person watching the video will no longer be taunted by their past. And if they do, they will not fall victim to fear. I decree and declare that they are walking in the boldness of God. For the Bible says that the righteous are bold as lions. So I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that they are reminded on today that even though they have been in a muddy pit, that even though 
though they have been a muddy well, that it does not define them, nor does it hinder them from progressing for greater and better things. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Be blessed, y'all.